we are here today in Saint Mary Glees in Normandy. And what we're doing today here is a little bit of myth busting, myth busting, and making stories of heart and myth. It doesn't really matter if it happened or not, in right? Exactly. Yeah. And what those myths are and what those things that maybe mattered if they happened or maybe didn't matter, you'll have to see next June when this all comes out, right? Yeah, and, so, and what we're looking at there, that mannequin, did it happen? We'll find out. Yeah, well, well he's there. There. He's been there. Happened. He's been Nothing there since happened. 1944. Oh wait, it's only 1943 on the channel. <gasps> he was there a year early. Okay, that was stupid. Okay, so we're here at the Pegasus Museum today, like Indy said earlier when we were in the car, and we've done some fantastic shots. But first of all, I'd like to, on behalf of Pangos, thank you. Thank you to the museum, and really, if you ever come here, it's worth it's a really visit. Cool. It's, it's really cool. It, it gives you a different perspective. It has the original bridge back there. Really, horse and glider back there. Yeah, it does. Even an original horse, or the remnants of an original horse and glider inside. It's, it's a cool place to go. So Pegasus Bridge is essentially where D-Day started. We're talking about a massive operation, 156,000 men coming ashore on five beaches over 50 miles, but it all starts with an airborne operation where three gliders for a bridge here and three gliders for another bridge that way came out in the middle of the night and landed to seize a vital crossing of a waterway to set everything into motion. That's why Pegasus Bridge is so important and that's why we're standing here. And if you're wondering who that is, that's Paul Woodedge from World War II TV who's doing a lot of hosting and interview stuff with us for the whole D-Day project. So thanks again. You're good. Thank you. I wanted to give you guys a little tour of the place we're staying in while we're shooting our D-Day uh, special coverage for next year. Um, we've been staying in a place called La Ferme au Chat, the cat farm. And uh, it's amazing. It's a really, really cool place. And uh, Celine and Jérôme, who, who run the bed and breakfast here, are the sweetest people. Best breakfast in the world. It's been an amazing stay, but it's also an amazing place. Now, what you see behind me here is the main building. And this used to be a refectory built in 1750 and used that way. And has a marvelous garden that you're going to see in a moment. Then, uh, as D-Day happened, this was turned into a field hospital. We're going to go look at that in a second. This is right in the middle of, of history that we're living in this really amazing place. And the history of Formigny goes back a lot further than just... Uh, uh, the Second World War, of course. Uh, in 1450, uh, in this area, there used to be a castle here, and that castle was actually on the grounds that we are now standing on as well. Uh, they've uh, ex excavated some of the, uh, the base of that, and it's like right under the grass out here, there are actual traces of it. And that was because it was like an, an important fortification during the 100 Years' War. And in 1450, the Battle of Formigny was the turning point for the French king's army against the English king's army in their contestation of who had control over Normandy. And after that, uh, gradually, Normandy came under control of the French king rather than under the English king as it had been more or less, off and on, since William the Conqueror uh, went from here to England and founded what is modern England. So the bed and breakfast has several really amazing cute rooms up here. There's the breakfast area down here. You're going to see it right now on the images. And uh, they've turned it into a place which is right smack in the middle of the D-Day experience because we're not far away from Omaha Beach. Uh, and all of the memorials and everything is really within, it's not walking distance, but it's almost walking distance, it's bike distance, and it's really worth a visit. So if you happen to be in this area, I can only highly recommend that you come to La Ferme Chat and that you make this your stay. So this is right where the field hospital was. And when the Americans set up the field hospital, they needed, of course, to be able to get out really quickly and they needed to get a lot of equipment in. So they set up tents out here in this part of the garden. Then they just took Semtex and just blew that whole part of the wall away so that they had like, you know, they had really wide access. And you can see that right here, how the old 18th century wall goes over into a concrete wall that was what was rebuilt after the war. So, I mean, this is a, it's an important location. There were field hospitals all over the place, of course, during D-Day and, uh, and during Operation Overlord. And what's really important to remember is that those became Operation Neptune, which is D-Day, 
uh, they were set up, the first ones, and the first ones were set up already. I mean, the first one was over at Benoville Bridge, and it started already shortly after midnight, and the first wounded were taking care of that. And then those came up all over the place. Um, as the time went on, and after uh, the 6th of June had passed, and they were moving further and further in, these places became the sorting uh, points and the redistribution points for the wounded. So the wounded would be brought in from the battlefield, they would be given first care here, and then they would be taken down to the beaches and transported back to England, where they would then convalesce. But as we see when we look at the graffiti back here in a moment, some men were staying here for, you know, weeks, weeks and weeks and weeks before they were either shipped back to the front or if they were long-term convalescents, then taken back to England and eventually back to the States and taken out of the war. So this is where the ones who gave so much had to be taken care of when they had been hurt and wounded. All right, it is, isn't it? <laughs> it is. That's fantastic. I gotta, let me get a Thank you so much, yes. <laughs> Well, here we are, and we're having a little barbecue. We've had wonderful meat. I'm just so delighted to be back in France to get proper entrecote. I know that it sounds like I'm a snob, but we're here in a wonderful place. It's absolutely magical. It's in the middle of all of the sites in Normandy. It's La Ferme aux Chats, and it is Jérôme over here, and Céline who run this place. Thank Celine you. is behind. She's hiding. She doesn't want to be on camera. We have so. Indy down here, bro. We have Indy down here. <laughs> oh. I'm still eating. I was I was running the grill today, so I'm the last one to eat. But I, I ate like a little piece off of like eight steaks in a row when I was grilling them, so I'm slowing down at the moment. We get we got friends, family's barbecue sauce, which is pretty amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. yeah. Um yeah, he's one of he's one of our brigadiers. We have we have we have three now, but we had four. Uh, uh, Brigadiers is a, it's a level of, of patron patron support on Patreon, and anybody at Brigadier level, if they want to join us when we're on the road, they get to join us. And uh, and right now we, we've got Mark, we've got Kat, and we've got Brent. And Rene was with us, but had to leave this morning. And Brent brought a bunch of barbecue sauce from his family's restaurant in Georgia, and it's re it's really good. Now, uh, some of you guys have seen Paul already on some of these. He is uh, he's he's. Well, he's he's a World War II expert, but for our purposes, he's a Battle of Normandy and D-Day expert. Uh, Paul Woodedge from World War II TV, and that is his lovely wife. We should also point out that Mag is herself a guide here uh, uh, in the D-Day environs, and she... Uh, that's how they met. Yeah, that's remember. how they met. And they can probably, both of them together, they can read the hell out of most other historians about what went on here on the 6th of June. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's been amazing talking to the fantastic Spartacus also. Now here's the OK Ryan Sokash. <laughs> <laughs> so basically my story is that I hijacked Indy's old leftovers. Yeah. yeah. It's history. I made it better. Yep, you did. And now I'm here. You did. I'm not arguing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was awesome. Into context. That was okay, into context. That's yeah, yeah. different. That's and, different and, and that's a time ghost thing now, no? But into context, nobody made better. Once in a while, yeah, yeah. we do it once in a while. Gotta be fair, I didn't write its history, I just hosted it. Well, you did a so, damn fine job. Uh, well, you know, Ryan, you want, you want a hug? I don't mind if I do. He's a free hug. It's a free hug. Hug, 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 hug. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the OK Ryan SoCash.